Welcome to all my new subscribers and thanks for joining the channel. Now today we'll have a look at a game that got many 10 out of 10s. A game that I bought with my own hard earned money and a game that has a reputation of being kinda heavy on the CPU but other than that has just received great praise about how well it was made. We'll have a look at if we can optimize some settings and if we can't how we need to scale down or in which order we need to scale down our settings. After that we'll have a look at each of those settings, see what they do or don't. Welcome to Hankers Gaming, guess who I am and guess which game we're going to have a look at. Well that's not a hard guess now is it, it was in the thumbnail and in the title, but let's go. Looking at the Ultra preset the game runs pretty well already. Throw that Hankers Gaming out of the window, we don't need him. Well now, hold on, if you have a newer system you might not, but if your system is somewhat older I still might be of use to you. So in this shot, ultra settings with DLAA enabled were pretty much above 80 FPS most of the time. Then what I would call optimized settings runs a lot better, we're pretty much above 120 FPS most of the time. Now Baldur's Gate 3 is not really a game where you need those kind of frame rates, but oh well. Here setting DLSS has the biggest impact, but we'll have a look at our settings in a moment. If you're still not getting enough FPS, you could lower some settings like ambient occlusion or turn shadows down. These have a lower graphical impact, although you will notice these, certainly when putting images side by side. Now usually you don't have a game running side by side, so perhaps you won't notice these. So that leaves the question, should you maybe use the ultra preset and just lower your resolution? Because generally I think that will look better than when playing with lowered settings. Here you see the game running at 1440p, looks just like the PlayStation 5 version now doesn't it? Now I've shown you a few different things you could consider, but let's go over these video settings in detail and see what you can set in order to get the game running great on your system. And we'll start by putting the game in full screen mode, this way you can choose the refresh rate you want to play at when playing V-Sync. I'm playing on a TV without fancy FreeSync or G-Sync options, so V-Sync it is for me. Now if you have a more powerful system you can probably play at 4K 60fps. By leaving DLSS off, if you have an Nvidia card, you could consider setting the anti-aliasing to DLAA instead of TAA with Fidelity FX Sharpening. However, running TAA with Fidelity FX Sharpening costs you less in FPS while looking about as good. We'll have a look later on. For quality we set to low, you probably won't see the difference and you'll gain some FPS. But still, as always with fog, no matter the quality, drive carefully. Now then, if you can use a nice bump in FPS after lowering the 4 quality, one thing you should do is turn on any kind of resolution upscaler. If you're an Nvidia card owner, turn on DLSS. As in most games, I would say set the performance level. You probably won't notice the difference in graphics because you're too busy rolling those critical success D20s. Now if you don't have an Nvidia card, of course, turn on FSR. A recent patch included FSR 2.2, which should give you about the same performance as FSR 1, while looking even better I believe. But I haven't really tested out these two, but you probably use them more often. I wouldn't go for FSR Ultra Performance level, just keep performance as the lowest option. Now when DLSS is turned on, it uses its own kind of anti-aliasing, so anti-aliasing is disabled. If you turn on anti-aliasing again, DLSS will be turned off, just so you know. This will probably get the game running rather well, but if you still need more FPS before turning down any other settings, I would first start lowering your resolution. All other settings that matter FPS wise have a graphical impact you will notice, so lowering the resolution is the best option to get more FPS while still looking very good. So why not play on 1440p, it's what all your console friends are doing, or give 30fps a try, Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that lends itself pretty well to playing at 30fps. Now if you still need more FPS and need to lower your settings even further, first consider turning off ambient occlusion. You will notice this being turned off, but mainly when you see the images of the game side by side. Even more FPS, then I would lower the shadow quality next. Turning this to low is definitely something you will notice, but not all shadows look that bad. And some flickering tree shadows, with a little bit of imagination, it could just be the leaves of the tree moving around. By the way, can I give a quick shout out to Larian about the menu? Every item has an example next to it of how it will impact the game. That's so helpful. I remember Lies of P where the shadow quality option only at the explanation sets the shadow quality. This is really good here Larian Studios. Ok, moving on, depth of field. For a few extra FPS, mainly in cutscenes where this effect is active, you could turn off depth of field altogether or you could lower the depth of field quality to quarter without the denoise. The depth of field effect will have some shimmering at quarter quality, but most of the time depth of field is used in the background and you are probably more focused on the foreground. 
Now most other settings have some kind of pop-in or do nothing noticeable, so I would advise to leave them at high or ultra, but again, we'll have a look in a moment. Model quality up first, no real win in FPS and causes great pop-in, so leave it at high. Cloud quality. Do you see many clouds in this game? Leave it at ultra. Texture quality, if your VRAM allows you to, leave it at ultra, probably only a win in FPS if you don't have that much VRAM. Instance distance also causes some kind of pop-in, I find it less intrusive than the model quality pop-in, but I would still leave this at high. Detail distance and animation level of detail, for both I didn't see any difference, not in graphics, not in performance, leaving them at high. And all other settings, god rays, bloom, subsurface scattering and dynamic crowds, I would leave them enabled. One thing worth mentioning, in the Larian launcher you get the choice to run the game with DirectX 11 or Vulkan. Since I didn't knew Vulkan, I did all my testing with DX11. And after recording almost everything I thought, well, what about that Vulkan by the way? Turns out, Larian recommends running in Vulkan, and Vulkan probably has a performance improvement over DX11. When I started the game with Vulkan however, as soon as I wanted to change settings, the game crashed. So perhaps first set everything the way you want to run the game with DX11 and after that change to Vulkan, see if it improves your experience. But of course, if the game is running fine the way it is, why change a winning team? Now before we continue and look at all settings and see how they impact the game performance wise and graphics wise, consider leaving a thumbs up, but only if you like the video so far of course. And leave in the comments down below if there are games or PC gaming themes you want me to have a look at. Well, let's continue. Okay, the settings then. Please note that as a baseline I'm running the game on the Ultra preset with anti-aliasing set to DLAA. So we'll start with the 4 quality, as I think this can be turned down no matter what. From Ultra to Low we see a performance increase of about 5-6% to in FPS, while I really don't see any difference in the fog. I think these scenes look identical. And also Halloween is over, so who needs good quality fog anyways? Also see the difference here, even when there's no fog around, set the fog quality to low and you'll get an FPS increase of about 5%. Now that's some spooky shit, isn't it? Remember that for next Halloween, could scare some kids with it. Next up, we'll look at the resolution, but please remember to turn on DLSS or FSR before lowering your resolution of course. So before lowering any other settings, I would think about lowering your resolution. Yes, it's no longer that nice 4K, but all other effects have greater visual impact than turning down your resolution. And this is good for a performance increase of a whopping 37%. Of course a little bit of finer detail may get lost, as we see in the golden patterns on Asterion's outfit, but oh well. Excuse me? Now since Baldur's Gate 3 has a reputation of using more CPU, mainly in the third act, I downloaded the save of the third act for some tests. The save I used is from Gamer Wharf on Nexus Mods. I'll leave a link for those saves down below. Now I didn't really find a specific part that was heavy on the CPU, so I just chose to stand around somewhere where there were a bit of people walking around as well. And yes, I see NPCs as real people. Now turning off the dynamic crowd animations perhaps lowers your CPU usage the tiniest bit, but looking at this turned off I think the animations of the people walking by look weird. They make blocky turns, so it's not worth that tiny bit. But the biggest win on CPU usage I think is turning the game to 30 FPS. In this shot of mine it half CPU usage, so that's quite a lot. You do have to be able to stomach 30 FPS of course, but well, as a previous PlayStation player I can handle this. I think the PS5 even runs the game at 30 FPS if you choose the quality option there. Well, keep in mind, gameplay certainly lends itself to 30 FPS. Anti-aliasing. Is this a club you can join by the way? Like the anti-bully club or the anti-smoking club? The anti-aliasing club? Anyways, the AA options next to one another. And then we see that no anti-aliasing, uh, that's a double negative there, so aliasing shows a bit of shimmer. But so does the SMAA as well. Anybody remember City Skylines 2? TAA and Nvidia's DLAA look best, but where TAA is ever so slightly more blurry, it runs a lot better than DLAA. Now looking at TAA, TAA with fidelity effect sharpening and DLAA together, visually the differences are very minimal. Now to be honest, if you're using FSR 2.2 or DLSS, you won't even be able to use AA. Only if you're using FSR 1 you can set the AA option. In that case I would use TAA. 
Ambient occlusion. Now the visual change is quite obvious. Shadows are way less pronounced when the setting is off, but it does give you an increase of about 8%. If you really are in need of FPS, I would turn this off. Yes, it shows, but it's a consistent experience throughout the game. At every point this will have the same visual representation, which I think is less annoying than things that pop in or shimmer, so keep that in mind. On we go to shadow quality, the next thing I would lower if you are in need of FPS. And again, every step you lower the shadow quality, you will notice it. Shadows are less sharp and seem to flicker a bit. Now that shows on this tree quite well. Character shadows still look pretty decent and you don't get that flickering effect, so it's not all that bad. Going from high to low, it gives you an increase of about 8%. Indoors, you might see some pop-in of shadows, unfortunately. As we walk towards or away from the lit up area in the cave, you see the shadow move in or out all of a sudden. This could pull you out of the experience a bit, but of course it's only indoors and only when there's this kind of light coming in. Moving over to depth of field, you mainly have this effect in the background in conversations or sometimes in cutscenes. Turning off this effect or using the quarter resolution option without the denoising are the best ways to get a few extra FPS. You win about 4% turning depth of field off and about 3% setting the quarter resolution quality of depth of field. I would say use a quarter resolution without the denoising, but you can notice this effect. Depth of field will then be a little bit noisier because it's, well, not denoised. Yes, sometimes these settings just literally, literally tell you what they do. Because it's mainly in the background, it might not be that distracting, but if you find it distracting, perhaps better turn off the depth of field altogether. Model quality then, I would leave this at high. I find the changes in the environment and the pop-ups of objects too jarring. Also, I don't really see a win in FPS. Now in future videos like these, I will try to remember to include CPU, RAM and VRAM metrics to see if those change perhaps. For now I would say, leave this at high. And the same goes for instance distance. I find the pop-in less jarring because objects or grass appears in a smooth manner, but they still appear. I would leave this at high. Texture quality, and who doesn't like nice textures? My VRAM usage is shown in green, and we see at the highest texture setting, in this place, VRAM usage is about 5 gigabytes. Now to be honest, if you're outside, or in Baldur's Gate perhaps even, VRAM usage might be a bit higher. In Baldur's Gate shot we had earlier, VRAM usage was about 5.8 gigabytes. But oh well, if you don't have 6 gigabytes of VRAM, I would say turn this down to high. Otherwise, leave it at ultra. Because you want to see every chainmail ring Shadowheart has on her armor, don't you? Well, I know I do. The trick question is, however, is that 4 quality over here high or low quality? And now here we are on the lookout for clouds. And in the distance we found some. So yes, well, what can I say? You don't see them often, I think, do you? And I don't think you see that much of a difference. They seem a little bit less full or dense on the low setting, right? Or is it just coincidence? Well, no real difference in FPS either, so I would just leave it at Ultra. Bloom then, and turning it off gives you about 1% win in FPS. For that 1% I would leave it on. I like the effect, the light is just glowing a bit more. Now God Rays, I couldn't turn these off, so yes, that's some divine interventions right there in the settings. Now before we wrap up this video, I just wanted to shout out the controller support in the game. When you use a keyboard and mouse, you get a keyboard and mouse interface, but just as soon as you switch to a controller and press the R3 button for example, the complete interface switches real time to a controller optimized interface. Really cool. Mouse and keyboard interface look a little bit better I think, but still, I love this controller support in a PC game. So yeah, are there optimized settings? It's always dependent on your system of course. I will probably just play the game at the ultra preset with the 4 quality set to low, but otherwise I would say turn on DLSS to the performance mode. If you really need performance, consider playing at 30 FPS, or lower your resolution first. All other settings have a visual impact you probably don't want to have, but whichever way you play, have fun of course. So that rounds up my look at Baldur's Gate 3, really looking forward to start playing the game, but I'm still working my way through Cyberpunk, so first things first I guess. Since you made it this far, consider subscribing, you've obviously got a huge tolerance for my face and all things that come out of my mouth. Now in two weeks I want to have a look at Dead Space, the remake. It was released in Game Pass as a kind of Halloween celebration, so I'll hope you'll join me on that one. 
How do? Scout! Get to the high ground! Raiders, strike the bastard! <laughs> 